the passive income ideas tier list for 2024. That's what we're gonna be going over today. And if you appreciate this type of content, go ahead and let me know by gently tapping that like button. And basically what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be ranking different passive income ideas from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And we're gonna start with selling templates. All right, so this basically involves kind of creating and marketing pre-designed formats or models. And basically it can be done by individuals or businesses for various different purposes. For instance, you could sell Notion templates, presentation templates, spreadsheet templates, financial planning templates, resume templates, website templates, digital design templates, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many different types of templates that you can sell. You can even sell YouTube thumbnail templates. And a lot of the time you'd be selling these on websites like Etsy, for instance, and you can make really good money from this. I've seen people make over $100,000 a month, for instance, selling Notion templates. And Notion is basically kind of an organization slash project management type platform where you basically just keep your your ideas and your life organized. And there's a lot of different templates that you can use on Notion. It's very customizable. So people buy this stuff left and right. So yeah, this one is honestly really good. It is pretty passive. I mean, once you create the templates, you don't really have to do much work after that. With that being said, in many cases, you're gonna have to market the templates. On some websites like Etsy, they might do the marketing for you, but a lot of the time you will have to market them. So that is some work. So for that reason, when it comes to passive income, I'm gonna go ahead and give selling templates A tier status. And by the way, I just wanna let you know that I'm gonna be doing a free training on how to grow and monetize your YouTube channel. And it's gonna be on Tuesday, at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be a live interactive Zoom call with me where I can answer questions that you have about YouTube. And I'll also be revealing the five biggest secrets when it comes to growing and making money from YouTube. And this is what you can do to either add a couple thousand dollars a month to your income or even grow a full-time income purely from making content on YouTube. And when I started out on YouTube, I was working as a pharmacist full-time, but within a few months of starting, I was getting messages like this in my inbox. And all of a sudden I was adding thousands of dollars on top of my full-time job. Now, if you wanna do the same, make sure to join the live training because I'll also be giving away a free mini course only to the people who show up to it. This is not going to happen anywhere else. There will be no replays and there's limited seating. So make sure you sign up by clicking the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And I look forward to seeing you there. Next is going to be buying and selling blogs or domain names. So this is basically where you find either an existing blog that maybe has a few articles on it or something that doesn't exist, but it has a really good domain name. Then you buy it, you hold it for a few years in many cases, and then you sell it later on for a profit. Now, this is a very common way of making money and it actually is extremely passive. Now, you do have to do a lot of research and work up front, and you do have to have kind of a high level of knowledge and you have to be good at predicting what's gonna happen in the future. But with that being said, if you can kind of predict where different trends are going, for instance, if you were able to predict that cryptocurrency was gonna get really big in the middle 2010s, you would have been able to buy up a bunch of different cryptocurrency related blogs dogs or domain names and make a ton of money. I mean, some of these different cryptocurrency related domain names are worth like $10 million plus now. And you can sell these on websites like Flippa, for instance, very common website to sell them on. And yeah, this is a legit way of making money. It does require higher level of skill. And there is a lot of research and work you have to put in up front, but this is still pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it, I'm gonna say A tier status. Next is gonna be creating and licensing intellectual property or IP. So this could be many different things, spanning all the way from uh, entertainment, publishing, gaming, merchandise. Different platforms would include books, movies, TV shows, video games, merchandise, and uh, lots of different digital content platforms. So for instance, there's some games out there where you can actually create games inside of games, right? So you can kind of design your own games. And then if other people really like it, they can buy that game or they can pay you to be in that game. And that would be an example of how this works. This one's pretty good, but it does require a lot of upfront work, a lot of upfront knowledge. And on top of that, you're probably gonna have to do a lot of marketing as well and then keep things updated. And so for that reason, I think I'll go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next is going to be renting bikes. And this is something that's relatively new that you can actually do, where if you have a bike or maybe several bikes, you can actually rent them out to the community. And there's different websites that you can use. Spinlister is one, Lyft is another one. 
one. And this is especially good if you live in a place where there's a lot of tourism. And a lot of these times these might be electrical bikes or electrical scooters. And you can actually rent these out for like $36 a day for hybrids and $95 a day for a road or mountain bike. So you can make a lot of money doing this. Now, that being said, um, you know, you do have to take care of the bike's maintenance. You, you know, sometimes people will drop the bike off in a weird place and you have to go get it. So you're either going to have to do that yourself or hire someone else to do it for you, which is going to eat into your profits. So this is still a pretty good one. I think it also really depends on the area that you live in. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a D tier status. Next is going to be my personal favorite. And this is one where honestly, any YouTuber that talks about side hustles or passive income or anything like that, and they don't mention this, they are being disingenuous because this is how they're making money. And that is start a YouTube channel. And specifically, I like to recommend starting boring YouTube channels, right? So YouTube channels where, you know, you're not trying to be the next famous person, you're not trying to be the next big vlogger or gamer or mukbang person or anything like that. Because all of those niches are mega saturated and basically the only people that win are the ones at the very top. So it's kind of a winner take all type of game. There are probably millions of people who have started gaming channels and haven't made any money or realistically they've probably lost money. However, there are tons of opportunities within education when you focus on solving real problems for real people that have real money, right? Something I always say, try to give value to other people, try to solve other people's problems, especially if they're problems that you've already solved in the past, so you're just automatically kind of an expert on it. And there's over 500,000 people in the United States that do YouTube full time. And there's a lot more people than that that are making a part-time income from YouTube. And I'm telling you right now, the easiest way to make a full-time income from YouTube is to start an educational channel where you're solving real problems for real people. And there's a million different reasons for that. The AdSense money is higher. It's easier to sell people with educational channels. It's easier to sell affiliate products with educational channels there's more different types of products and there's more different products that you can sell it's just like over and over just like basically every single reason you look at it's better to start an educational channel so yeah i absolutely have to give this one s tier status without a doubt because every single time you create a video with education content you're basically creating a little soldier who's going to be working for you for the next 20 or maybe even more years trying to make you money every single day. So every single time you create a video, it's like an asset that's just out there on the internet that's just gonna keep making you more and more money. So yeah, gotta love this one. You know, as a YouTuber, I feel obligated to tell you guys how good this is. I think a lot of these channels don't tell you guys because I guess they're you know, afraid that they're gonna create more competition or something like that. But with that being said, I do offer coaching to a few people per month. Um, and I also offer some free training and you can check both of those things out down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. They're both in the same link. So definitely check that out if you're serious about growing on YouTube. Maybe you're someone who's already tried it for a while, you haven't had any success and you just need a little bit of extra help to get your breakthrough. Next is going to be licensing your artwork. Now, there is so many different ways to do this. It's really just kind of broad. You know, you could take photos, you could make, you know, NFT artwork, you could make digital artwork, you could take videos and then sell them on different websites. So many different ways to do this. And I really think this was a great uh, side hustle probably like five years ago. I mean, amazing side hustle. These days, it's not as good. But with that being said, you can still make money doing this. Um, it's just a lot harder. So I think I'm going to have to put this one in F tier. Not to say that it's terrible. It's not the worst, but just compared to a lot of the other ones on the list, this one isn't as good. So I'm gonna put this one in F tier. All right, next is investing in index funds. And index funds basically track either the whole market or a large portion of the market. And so by doing this, you really lower your risk because chances are, you know, knock on wood, the entire market isn't going to permanently crash. Whereas if you invest in one or even two or three companies, there is a good chance that one of those companies could completely crash and that's probably gonna wipe out all your profits. And possibly even two of them are going to crash and that means you just lose all your money right or most of your money so index funds are great because they've returned like 10 percent per year for a very long period of time that doesn't mean they're going to continue returning 10 percent per year in fact adjusted for inflation it was only about 7.1 percent and it could be lower than that in the future or it could be higher nobody really knows but with that being said index funds are basically the definition of passive income if you've got a bunch of money and you want to diversify your money in a way that's pretty safe and it's going to give you pretty good returns index funds are amazing i'm going to put index funds into S tier. Next is creating an e-commerce store specifically with Amazon FBA, which stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. 
And this is basically where the only really thing you have to control is choosing the product that you're going to sell and then putting that product up on a listing. So doing the marketing for the product on Amazon itself. Everything else is pretty much taken care of for you by Amazon, which is incredible. I mean, that's that's awesome. And that's why Amazon FBA has created so many people that have been able to make a full time income as well as millionaires. I mean, chances are there's a bunch of different items that you have bought yourself that were sold by Amazon FBA sellers. And yeah, this one is pretty good. Um, it was even better like five years ago. It's definitely not as easy as people make it out to be. But with that being said, there's always going to be physical objects that people buy, right? People are always going to be buying consumer goods. And there's pretty much no limit to the different variations that you can have in different types of consumer goods. But with that being said, this is a ton of work, uh, especially up front. This is not passive at all. A little bit down the line, once you've hired a bunch of people and like sold your soul and done a ton of work, I uh, can be somewhat passive. But for that reason, I'm going to have to give this one a C tier status. Next is going to be renting out your console. And this basically involves renting or leasing uh, your gaming consoles to individuals who want to enjoy gaming without owning the hardware. And this can be done through platforms like Craigslist or online gaming forums. And if you're not using some of your consoles anyways, might as well rent them out to other people. So I've seen a lot of people making money with this typically it's not a large amount of money and you always run the risk that the other person steals it or damages it or something along those lines so for that reason i'm going to go ahead and put this one into f tier by the way comment down below if you have any ideas for other types of passive income uh, ideas that I should have put into the video. Also comment if you like any of the ones that I did put in the video. And in the future, I might make follow up videos that go into more detail. Next is going to be ATM. So this is a pretty cool side hustle. Um, I didn't realize how profitable this was until I met this guy named Paul Alex. And Paul Alex is a really cool guy. He basically started uh, making ATMs. He was a police officer, he was kind of a detective, and he started placing ATMs and he started making 500 bucks a month. Uh, uh, on his first ATM right away. And I think he paid about $2,000 for that ATM. So within four months, it paid for itself. And then after that, it was basically just pure profit. And ATMs generally make between $300 to $800 per month. And with Paul, after I think 18 months or so, he was making $15,000 a month. And again, most of that was just pure profit. So that was kind of his ticket to kind of escape nine to five and start a really simple, easy, but very realistic business. Now it is a lot of work up front buying the ATMs, uh, finding a place to put the ATMs, and then you do have to maintain the ATM. So someone has to obviously put cash into them. You can do that yourself, but that's going to be work. If you want to hire somebody else to do it, you got to trust them for one, because they're going to be handling your cash. And then on top of that, that's going to eat into your profits. So this one is really good. I do like it. Uh, I think it's very beginner friendly. But with that being said, I think just because of the fact that, you know, there is a little bit more work with this one, I'm going to go ahead and put it into B tier. Next is going to be something relatively similar. Also a pretty good passive income idea, and that is laundromats. So basically, you have a laundromat, you open it up, it's a self service laundromat and customers can basically wash and dry their clothes using coin operated machines. Now this one is quite costly to start, you either have to rent out a building or buy a building, then you have to either rent out or buy a bunch of different washers and dryers, you have to make sure it's in a good location. And you have to hire somebody unless you want to do it yourself uh, to you know, take the coins, uh, replace all the machines like different types of laundry detergent. And if you have like snack machines and stuff like that, they're replacing that stuff as well. And that can really eat into your profits. And it's also, you know, a good amount of work if you decide to do it yourself. I mean, if you think about it, like with the amount of coins that people put into these laundromats, like it's pretty heavy, actually, like you're going to be filling entire buckets up with coins, and then you have to carry those coins somewhere, then you have to count the coins or put them in a machine that counts them. And then you have to go like kind of exchange the coins for cash. It's a lot of work, right? It's, it's not super easy. But with that being said, laundromats basically consistently generate like on average about $142,000 a year in revenue. Now that's not profit. But imagine, you know, let's just say it's 50% profit. So they're generating like $70,000 a year in profit. Imagine if you have like 10 laundromats, you hire a few employees to take care of all of them. And you're making a ton of money doing this. So a lot of these kind of boring sort of like, you know, physical businesses that are super boring, not sexy at all, they require a lot of manual labor. Um, they're kind of underrated these days, honestly. So I'm gonna go ahead overall, when it comes to passive income, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into 
B tier. Next is going to be stock photography or video footage. Uh, kind of already talked about this one a little bit earlier, but this one's a little more specific. But yeah, this is exactly what it sounds like. You take photographs, you take videos, and then you basically sell them online. And again, this used to be an amazing side hustle like, I don't know, five or 10 years ago, but these days it's not as good. It's much more saturated. But if you can find a really good type of photo and video to make that a bunch of people want, if you're really good at kind of thinking of those types of things, this can still be really good. I also think that with the onset of AI, there's gonna be a lot of opportunities here to create even more videos that people are gonna to wanna to see. And you can kind of just flood the market with your work. iStock Photo is one website that does this, of course. There's many, many websites out there where you can sell your photos and your videos though. But yeah, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and give it D tier status. Next is creating an app. And this is exactly what it sounds like. You basically create an app. You could sell this in the Apple Store, or the Google Play Store. And this is a ton of work up front because you have to hire a developer, unless you're a developer yourself, in order to create the app. However, this is the one that probably has the highest income potential out of every single one on this list. I mean, you could actually legitimately make like $100 million doing this. But with that being said, the vast majority of people are not making much money and it's a lot of work up front. Plus you have to fix bugs down the line and you have to upgrade your app. So this one is honestly not very passive. And for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a C tier ranking. Next is going to be selling educational worksheets. Now this is one that came on my radar uh, last year and I actually saw some people and met some people that were making really good money doing this. And honestly, it's really good. So you could basically create like notes. Let's say that you went through nursing school, for instance, you could create notes on your nursing school stuff, uh, basically kind of like quick notes to teach them the important points that they really should know about the different drugs, for instance. And then you could sell them on a platform like Etsy or even Shopify. There's also different websites out there like Teachers Pay Teachers, where you can get paid more sort of upfront for different things. The income potential wouldn't be as high, but you'd be getting paid more upfront and it would be more of a kind of a sure thing. And in a lot of cases, they're actually promoting their different educational materials on a different platform. So that's also a lot of work. So for that reason, I think I'm gonna to have to give this one a B tier ranking. Next is going to be creating and selling online courses. So this is one that's really good. There's a lot of websites out there like Udemy, Skillshare, et cetera, where you can actually create and then sell your own online course. And a lot of these courses on these different websites are kind of lower ticket courses where you, know, you could create something on how to create a resume for a nurse or something like that. Let's just say you're watching this and you're a nurse. You could create a course on how to create a resume as a nurse or even more specific, how to get into a specific type of nursing job and how to create a resume for that, right? So chances are you have some kind of expertise that the world, other people out there who are trying to become nurses, for instance, could utilize, right? You could give value to them by creating kind of a lower ticket course, selling it on Udemy or Skillshare. Um, if you have something where it's really important, like a really important skill, you can even create a higher ticket course, sell it for like a thousand or even $2,000, and you could host it on a bunch of different websites out there. So this one's really good, but with that being said, especially if you create the higher ticket course, you're gonna have to do your own marketing. If you create the lower ticket course and put it on like Udemy or Skillshare, you're not gonna have to do as much of your own marketing. So it's a lot more passive. I think overall, I'm gonna give this one an A tier ranking. By the way, share this with someone else out there who needs to see it. We put a ton of effort into these videos. We don't have a giant marketing team like a lot of these big companies do. You know, we try to tell you the truth. We try to give you the best possible information. So if you appreciate that, go ahead and share this with somebody else who could benefit from it as well. Next is going to be rental real estate property. Now, I've always been somewhat sketched out by real estate because I have a lot of family members who are in real estate and I just kind of understand how it works. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are trying to sell the dream when it comes to real estate. State, but realistically speaking, even though there's a lot of people who try to overhype it, it's still really good to invest in. Now, real estate is not as passive as many people make it out to be. I mean, think about it, right? You've got to maintain the house. You've got to make sure that the tenants are paying. You, if a tenant leaves, you have to find a new tenant. If something breaks in the house, you have to fix it for the tenant, right? So it's a lot of work. And then if you hire somebody to take care of it, a property manager, for instance, that's gonna eat into your profits. But with that being said, historically speaking, real estate is one of the best investments you could possibly make. And it is relatively passive. I mean, it's a little bit of work. Um, 
you know, you can make it completely passive or almost completely passive if you hire a property manager, but it's still always gonna be a little bit of work. But yeah, real estate's amazing. I'm gonna have to go ahead and put this one into S tier. Next is going to be drop shipping, and specifically, you'd be using a platform like Shopify. Now, I do like the idea of drop shipping. I think it's a good one for beginners to start just to learn the absolute basics of business. And basically, the idea behind drop shipping is you sell stuff online, but you didn't actually have to create create it or store it until it's sold. So somebody else already created it and they're already storing it. And if you're able to sell that thing, you get a cut of the profit. So you'd basically be dealing with somebody maybe on Alibaba or AliExpress, for instance, and you buy something for five bucks, you sell it for 30 bucks. Uh, the cost of shipping and everything like that might be another five bucks. So you'd end up making like $20 in profit, something along those lines. Usually it's gonna be lower than that because the margins are lower. But yeah, that's basically how it works. You don't have to take very much risk yourself uh, because of the fact that you were not the one who created the product. So you didn't spend a bunch of time on R&D. You're not the one who actually manufactured the product. So you didn't have to spend a bunch of money on that. And you are basically not the one who has to deliver the product. Somebody else does that for you. So you don't have to worry too much about logistics either. The only thing you really have to worry about is picking the right product and then marketing it. But marketing it is actually really hard. So for that reason, uh, because of the fact that it's very hard, uh, both skill wise as well as time wise, um, I'm going to have to put drop shipping into D tier status can still be really good. I think it's a good one for beginners to start just to learn the basics of business. And one thing I'll say about drop shipping is you see these crazy numbers like, oh my God, they made $13 million in a year. But what they don't tell you is that's revenue, not profit. And you know, out of the $13 million, they might have only had like 500,000 in profit in some cases, right? But still, you know, pretty good one. Don't get me wrong. Um, I do think it's a little overrated. It's definitely not passive like people make it out to be. Um, so yeah, Let's move on to the next one, renting out your own car. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I think a lot of people have heard of Toro, for instance. But yeah, this is a new kind of like ride sharing type of industry. And if your car is gonna be sitting there all day anyways, whether you're at home or at work, might as well just rent it out to somebody and make some money from it, right? So here you can rent a Tesla Model 3 for $55 a day. So if you were that Tesla Model 3 owner, you'd be making $55 a day from it. Multiply that by about 30 and you have over $1,500 a month from a single car. I mean, that might even be paying for your car payment. So this one isn't gonna get that high unless you have an entire fleet of cars, which of course would be a lot of work. But with that being said, it is relatively passive. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a C tier ranking. Next is going to be vending machines. So I think everybody knows what vending machines are. You know, maybe you get some candy out of them or maybe you get a drink out of them, something along those lines. A lot of the time you can buy these for like one to 2K per month. Let's just say like 1.5K per month. And you can make anywhere from like 300 to $500 per month from these. With that being said, it is a lot of work to keep them stocked and to make sure that they have money as well, right? Because you're gonna have to stock the food or the candy or whatever. And you're also gonna have to stock the money. Plus, you're going to have to pick up the money once a bunch of people have put in their dollar bills. So this one isn't as passive as people make it out to be. Of course, you could say, well, you can hire an employee to go do it for you. Yeah, that's going to eat into your profits, of course. Uh, but with that being said, there's this 31 year old making $300,000 a year with his vending machine business. Um, you know, you can definitely make money from this. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Next is starting a membership website. So this could be any number of different things. You could use Patreon, for instance. Another one would be WordPress, Substack, et cetera. And this is basically a website where people have to pay a membership in order to see the content. So this can be really good, uh, especially paid newsletters. I really like paid newsletters as a business model. But with that being said, it is definitely not passive. This is something you're gonna have to work really hard on, but you can make really good money doing this. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into B tier status. Next is writing an ebook, and you'd probably be doing this on something like Amazon Kindle. This is also known as Amazon KDP Publishing, and KDP stands for Kindle Direct Publishing. And this is actually a legit way of making money. I mean, there are people out there that are absolutely crushing it by doing this. They're making 500,000 a month, a million dollars a month, absolutely crushing it. Lots of people are making just a nice full-time income as well. So yeah, really like this one. Um, it's definitely not that passive, but with that being said, once you put the books up, it is relatively passive. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, go ahead, what have you been waiting for? Subscribe to the video. I think only about 20% of you are subscribed, the rest of you are lurkers, come on. Don't be a lurker, subscribe. And also ring that notification bell. Next is going to be creating a lead gen website for service-based businesses. So this would be something along the lines of you create a website that collects leads for people who want to replace their roof. And then you sell these leads to a roofing company and they would pay you for the leads, but then they're the ones who actually, you know, go ahead and call the leads and make the sales. And there's a lot of opportunity for this, um, especially in kind of, you know, local areas. So you start one lead gen website in one city, another lead gen website in a different city, and you basically do all of them on the same subjects that you already know a lot about. So a lot of the content is going to be kind of almost copy paste type content. So this can be pretty good. Good. I mean, you can make a ton of money doing this. With that being said, it is a lot of work. And so for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put it into B tier. Next is going to be investing in startups. Now, this is one where if you have a lot of knowledge, or if you're just really smart, you can make a ton of money doing this, you can actually make much better returns than an index fund, for instance, but you really have to do your research, a lot of research up front. And you also have to know that you're going to be wrong a lot of the time. Plus, you're going to have to have a bunch of capital in order to invest. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put investing in startups into to D tier. It can be great for the right type of person, but for most people, it's not gonna be good. Next is going to be blogging. And this is basically where you create websites and you create blogs on these websites that are SEO optimized. SEO stands for search engine optimization. And this is basically what makes your blog rank on the top of Google. And blogging is one of those things where I do think if you just stick with it, it's one of the easiest and most predictable ways of making money online. But with that being said, it is a lot of work up front, And it's one of those things where you have to have a lot of patience as well, because you're probably not going to make very much money for the first like nine months to a year. But after you get past that year, year and a half two year mark, there's a very good chance your blog is going to be making a full time income. So this one requires a lot of patience. Um, you know, it's not very passive, especially up front. But with that being said, when you do create the website, you do it the right way, you create a bunch of different blogs that are really good that are on the website, this can be really good. I'm going to go ahead and put it into I'm gonna say A tier. Next is affiliate marketing. So there's so many different things that you can do with affiliate marketing. And the beautiful thing about it is it basically works with almost every other business model out there. So for instance, create a blog, you can put affiliate products on there. Boom, you make money from affiliate marketing. You create a YouTube channel, you put affiliate products on there, you make money from your YouTube channel, you figure out how to run paid ads, you can put affiliate products and make money from the paid ads. So yeah, affiliate marketing is really good. Um, you know, it is kind of a little bit of a learning curve up front. But with that being said, I think it's still pretty good for beginners. I really do like affiliate marketing. Um, you know, you do have to learn some digital marketing skills, some copy principles, usually like copywriting and that kind of thing. But yeah, affiliate marketing, amazing. I'm going to go ahead and put it into S tier. And by the way, if you want to skip the whole side hustle thing and just get a nice job doing digital marketing, or if you want to get a job doing digital marketing so that you can get paid to learn it and then do affiliate marketing later on down the line, that's a really good option. I've actually interviewed a bunch of people on this channel that have been able to get jobs in digital marketing without the need for a college degree or previous experience. And if that's something that you're interested in, there's actually going to be some free training down in the description as well as the pinned comment below that'll tell you all about digital marketing, the different types of digital marketing, and whether or not it is right for you. So definitely check that training out. Next is going to be dividend stocks and bonds. And dividend stocks basically are stocks that pay you out. They might pay you out monthly or quarterly or you know every six months or every year, but they are basically guaranteed to pay you out unless the company goes under or something like that. And so they're a pretty good way of consistently knowing how much money you're going to make. And then same thing with bonds, you pretty much know consistently exactly how much you're going to get back from bonds. And you're not really taking too much risk when you do it. So this is truly passive. You know, once you invest in it, you pretty much don't have to worry about it after that. You know, with dividends, for instance, you do have to pay taxes on the dividends, which kind of sucks. But yeah, this one's really good. I'll go ahead and put it into B tier. Next is going to be investing in REITs. And that stands for real estate investment trust. 
And this is a way of investing in real estate in such a way where you don't have to be good at evaluating the real estate, you don't have to do all the work yourself, and you get to diversify your real estate investments so you're not taking as much risk. But with that being said, you're also gonna be making less when it comes to profits. So I would say this is an excellent idea if you're just trying to diversify your portfolio. So let's just say you think stocks are gonna be going down in the next 10 or 20 years, you're not very bullish on index funds, but you think real estate's gonna continue doing well, you you might consider investing some in stocks and also some in real estate. And the easiest way to invest in real estate is to invest in a REIT. So this is a legit way of making money. I think typically people are making like seven, eight percent per year. So it's on par with index funds. But the good thing is you're not taking very much risk, whereas you would be taking a lot of risk if you just got a single house, for instance. So yeah, REITs are pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put them into A tier. Next is going to be high yield savings accounts or certificates of deposits. Basically, this is where you're you're keeping your money in the bank and you're making money off of that money since you're not doing anything with it anyways. But for some reason, you wanna keep that money as liquid in the bank so that you can use it later on. Maybe you're trying to kind of save up money so you can buy a house, for instance, or put a down payment on a house. Might as well put them in a high yield savings account. And depending on inflation and a bunch of other things, I've seen high yield savings accounts uh, going from anywhere from like one and a half percent all the way up to over two and a half percent. So this is a pretty good way of making money. I mean, one and a half, two percent isn't gonna make that much of a difference, but if it's just gonna be in the bank anyways, might as well do this. I'll go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next is going to be selling digital products. So there's a lot of different digital products that you can create. You could create like a mini course, for instance. You could create eBooks different types of templates. You could even create music, stock photography, et cetera. This is sort of an umbrella term for all those different things that you can sell digitally. Now, one thing that's really nice about digital products is the profit margins are usually over 85%, which is amazing. You also don't have to worry about things like inventory or shipping. So these can be really good. I mean, it depends on the digital product you create um, and a lot of other things, but these can be really good. If you put them on the right platforms, the right websites, they'll actually do the marketing for you. So it can be pretty passive. So yeah, I like this one, I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. By the way, I did create a video that got really good feedback, and that is 19 side hustle ideas that actually work. And there's going to be a bunch of different side hustle ideas that I didn't mention in this video. And you should definitely check that out by clicking right here.